While in the high seas, an American submarine lurking deep in the ocean has spotted an enemy warship located around 15 kilometers on the surface. The American submarine launches the Mark 48 conventional torpedo. The torpedo is now speeding at 55 knots and moves towards the target. When the torpedo is halfway around, the enemy ship identifies the threat and launches two torpedoes as countermeasures. These torpedoes travel at a mind-boggling speed of over 300 km per hour. It hits the approaching torpedo and the American submarine. The American submarine is destroyed. How did the torpedo travel so fast in water? As if like a bullet? Let's find out. The torpedo launched by the Russian warship is called the VA-111 Shikval. The surprising fact about this torpedo is that it was designed way back in the 1960s and has been in service with the Russian Navy since 1977 onwards. It was created exclusively for countering nuclear submarines, which was emerging as a major threat for the Soviet Union. But what technology this torpedo employs that makes it travel like a bullet underwater? The Shikwal uses the principle of supercavitation. Normally when an object travels in water, it experiences drag. This drag reduces the speed of the object. But if the same object is made to travel to a much higher speed, then a low pressure is created in the surrounding of the object, causing a bubble to form. This bubble, if it is big enough, would engulf the object fully. This bubble would provide frictionless travel through water. An object would attain supercavitation if it attains a minimum velocity called cavitation velocity. And this depends on the mass and the density of the object. But a torpedo moves by means of a propeller, which practically cannot achieve any supercavitation. For this reason, the Russians used a rocket to propel Shikwal. A solid fuel rocket accelerates Shikwal to cavitation speed. The technology to use rockets underwater is an innovation by itself because rockets need oxygen to burn their fuel. Even though this sounds like extreme engineering, the Soviets achieved this breakthrough way back in the 60s and 70s. The trick used here is that the speed is maintained by an underwater ramjet fueled by hydro-reactive metals using seawater as both reactant and a source of oxidizer. The VA-111 Shikwa is launched from a normal 533mm torpedo tube at 50 knots with the usual propeller drive. After reaching a critical speed, a solid fuel rocket accelerates it to cavitation speed. To make supercavitation more reliable, High-pressured gas is emitted from vents in the front. This ensures the bubble is big enough to cover the entire 26 feet length of the torpedo. Supercavitation with rocket propulsion was difficult to sustain for a long time. Hence its range was limited to only 15 kilometers. In spite of its innovation, the sequel was not maneuverable and hence traveled in straight lines like a typical World War II torpedo. The first sequels to be fitted in submarines were nuclear tipped. Since the range of these torpedoes was only 15 kilometers, any nuclear detonation would destroy the submarine launching it. This weapon was to be used as a last resort or a revenge weapon, meaning it could be used as a countermeasure against torpedoes launched by undetected submarines. The VA-111 sequel has been in service with the Russian Navy since 1977, with the mass production starting in 1978. Several models were later developed with the most successful variant called the M5. The Russians later added thrust vectoring for maneuverability and sonar terminal guidance to improve on its accuracy. Also, the torpedo was redesigned to carry conventional warheads. In spite of Sikwell's amazing speed, it was very noisy and was easily giving away both the torpedo and the launch submarine. Since the submarine as a weapon was primarily an instrument of stealth, the noisy high-speed torpedo did not cause much excitement for further development. The Russians have maintained strict secrecy over this project. In spite of this, the US and the Chinese Navy have learned from the technology and are developing their own supercavitating torpedoes and submarines. But on 2nd April 2006, Iran test-fired a torpedo within its territorial waters in the Strait of Hormuz. This torpedo was traveling at approximately 360 km per hour. This shocked the world as Iran is under strict sanctions. From where did the Iranians get such advanced technologies? The Russians, however, denied any transfer of high-tech stuff. But you can guess, it was a brilliant work of the Russians. This one torpedo would play a spoil sport for any surprise naval attack by the US and its allies. 
This may be one of the reasons why Iran is still not attacked by US and Israel. As for the Russian torpedo sequel, it continued to be manufactured by a government-owned company in the former Soviet Republic of Kyrgyzstan. Recently, Russia purchased 75% stake in the company for writing out Kyrgyzstan's debt. The sequel continues to be developed and upgraded, but a lot of information remains confidential. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.